Get a load of this. I just bought some of our oil stuff. I'm going to be rich. Mr. Powell said so. Why don't you buy some? Oh, you wouldn't take a chance. Well, what do you think you took when you married that traveling salesman? Could I help you? I'd like to see Mr. Powell. He's giving a sales talk in the lecture room. Won't you be seated? Oh, I, uh, I wonder if I might listen to the lecture. Well, certainly, if you wish. Go right down that corridor. It's the second door on your right. Thank you. This is a view of the Amalgamated Oil Company's field that joins ours. It is one of the largest producing fields in South America. What an inspiring sight. Did you ever see anything more beautiful? I haven't. In a few short months, our field will bristle with producing wells just like the picture before you. When you see a golden opportunity like this, friends, are you going to pass it by? Well, I'm not. I've invested every cent I own in this project. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our picture. But before you go, there's just one thing more I'd like to say to you. Now, this is not a fly-by-night sales promotion scheme but an opportunity for you to invest in a legitimate enterprise that will return you a life income. I don't believe there is one of us here who could finance the drilling of a well alone. But by putting our money together, our individual small sums become a collective giant who will open up the gates of opportunity and happiness for everyone. When did you get back to civilization? You didn't expect me to stay in the jungle the rest of my life, did you? Well, I was beginning to think you were going to. How are all the cannibals? I see you stayed one jump ahead of them. Or are you too tough to make a good stew? Sit down. <laughs> no, no, I put them all on a vegetable diet. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. You always did have a good line. I just listened to your sales talk. You did? What did you think of it? Well, not much. Why? You didn't believe those promises, did you? Well, I'll admit I did exaggerate a little, but it's a sweet proposition. Perhaps, for the company. Did you take a good look at those people you were talking to? They've worked hard for the little they have. And getting them to put their money into a thing like this is wrong. It's outright stealing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't escape the laws of retribution, Frank. They're not man-made. I'll admit what you say is true about some companies, but this one is really on the level. If I didn't think so, would I have put $11,000 of my own money in it? You did that? Why, of course. And when the first well comes in, I'm getting married. Oh, she's a wonderful girl, Curtis. I'll introduce you to her. And if the well doesn't come in? Don't worry. It will. Marjorie, this is my brother, Curtis. Miss Norton, Mr. Powell. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Norton? Curtis got tired of converting heathens, so he came up to work on me. Do you think there's any hope for him? Well, there might be if that well comes in. Now, let's not worry about me. The point is, we have to worry about you. While he's here, it's up to me to see that he's properly entertained. You know, hot shows, cabarets, maybe a gambling club or two, and all the best cocktail bars. That's what I like about Frank. His taste is so appropriate. Hey, speaking of taste, how about having dinner at your apartment tonight? You know, just to sort of celebrate the occasion? Well, I'm afraid that will cause Miss Norton a lot of trouble. Oh, no, no, why not at all. Marjorie loves to cook. Besides, it'll give me a chance to show you exactly why I picked her out of 50,000 applicants. Say, it's getting near quitting time. Suppose you and Marjorie run along and I'll join you later. I've got a lot of work to do here, but it won't take me over an hour. And uh, could we have some of that famous Swiss steak with the nickel-sized biscuits? Yes, sir. Oh, and if you hurry, You'll just have time to make a lemon pie. Yes, sir. I'll get my coat. I'll wait here. 
Come in. Hello, Mrs. Hardy. Hello, Frank. May I speak to you a moment, please? Well, certainly. Come in. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? You remember Joe, don't you? Well, yes. Well, he's down in South America now. And I've just had a letter from him that's made me terribly anxious about my oil stock. See. If the company says they are about to bring in a well, they're lying to you. You'd better look into it. I can't understand that. Here's our latest report. We're drilling three wells at once down there, and our number one well is down 4,200 feet. I guess Joe must be mistaken. I'm sure that he is. May I keep this letter, Miss Hardy? Thank you. Now, don't you worry about a thing. I knew I was right in coming to you. Sarah wanted me to go straight to the police, but I said, no, sir, I'm going to talk it over with Frank. I knew you wouldn't be selling stock if there was anything crooked. Thank you, Miss Hardy. I appreciate your confidence in me. Now, you go on home, don't you worry about a thing. This is a perfectly legitimate deal, and everything is going to turn out all right. Good night. Uh, good night. What sort of progress are we making at the field, Carlton? Why, uh, haven't you seen the reports? Well, I've seen them all right. But what I want to know is, are they correct? Why, of course Certainly they're, they're correct. correct. What do you mean by asking such a question? Just this. Here's a letter from a Mrs. Hardy. A nephew of hers is down there, and he says there's absolutely no drilling going on at all. How about it, Carlton? Why, uh, oh, that's ridiculous. Is that true? Why ask him? I'm in charge of operations. Well, I'll tell you, the man doesn't know what he's talking about. Are you sure? Don't be a fool, Powell. Maybe I have been already. I've done a lot of talking about how honest this company is. I've taken money from people who can't afford to lose it. I've even sold all my friends on this proposition, and I've invested a lot of my own money in it. I think you're getting yourself all worked up over nothing, Powell. Why, certainly. A nephew's probably trying to stir up trouble. We'll give this hardy woman a money back if she's not satisfied. That won't satisfy me. I've never seen the field, and I'm not going to sell another share of stock until I do. You mean you want to go down there? As fast as a plane will take me. Well, I suggest that you wait until after the sales campaign. We can't spare you right now, Powell. I'm not waiting for anything. I've known you a long time, Carlton. I've taken your word for everything that went on around here. But if there's anything crooked, you'll pay for it. And that goes for you too, gentlemen. Get me South American Airways. South American Airway? When is your next plane leave for Miami? Tomorrow morning. Is there another leaving here that connects with it? 40 minutes? Make a reservation right away. Frank Powell. P-O-W-E-L-L. -L. That's right. Get me circle, 34700. Hello. Is Miss Norton in? This is Mr. Powell speaking. I want to leave a message for her. Tell her something has happened that makes it necessary for me to leave town immediately. I'll explain to her when I get back. Thank you. Yes. Goodbye. Well, why didn't you try to buy him off? We wouldn't have had a chance with him. I told you we shouldn't have used that money. So what? We took a chance on the market and lost. We'd won, we'd have been patting each other on the back. What are we going to do? We can't stand an investigation at this time. We might move to a healthier climate. Yes. Powell can't get back in less than a week. That ought to give us a good start. Yes, that's all right for you two. But I have a wife and family. It means ruin and disgrace to them. A little too late to think about that now. Come on, Burns. Let's go over the accounts. 
Might as well get it all while we're waiting. Right. My dear family, I was persuaded by my two partners to join them in using some of the company's funds for personal speculation. I cannot bear the thought of facing those with whom I have broken faith, nor the disgrace I have brought on you, whom I love. That is why I am taking my own life. With my last breath, I ask your forgiveness. William Carlton. that make? 26,000. That's 13,000 apiece. Well, what about Carlton? Why the fool? Now we'll have to clear out of here in a hurry. Maybe we won't have to clear out of here at all now. Well, what do you mean? He carried a hundred thousand dollar life insurance made out to the firm. Well, he off on suicide. It's not old enough. Yeah, maybe not. But it pays double for violent death. Look up Tony Morocco's phone number. This isn't suicide. It's murder. Your boy sure folded up like a punctured balloon when O'Brien socked him last night. That's all right, Tony. He wasn't in condition. None of your fighters ever are. They couldn't even box oranges. They're doing all right, and so am I. Yeah, am I. When I make bets with ham and eggers like you. Quit sticking that desk. I just paid 10 bucks to have it refinished. OK. There's your two grand. You're sure it's all here? You wouldn't know unless somebody counted it for you. <laughs> Yeah? This is Tony Maroc. This is George Richards. I've got a little job for a couple of your boys. No, he's that way already. Now meet me across the street from my office in about 20 minutes. Yeah. The speculating was done in Carlton's name. I get circle 78200. We claimed that we didn't know anything about it and make good from the insurance money, the amounts that he took. That ought to satisfy everybody. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Carlton, Briggs. Tell Mrs. Carlton that I had to go to Mr. Powell's apartment on business. I won't be home to dinner. Your name's Frank Powell? Yes. Well, you're under arrest. Arrest? For what? For the murder of William Carlton. Carlton? 
Murdered? Yes, murdered. Alden came to your apartment to confess and throw himself upon your mercy. You got in an argument with him, killed him, and tried to escape to South America. I didn't kill Carlton. I swear I didn't. I swear it. Nine to three for conviction. Let's review this evidence again. I didn't threaten Carlton. He said, Carlton, if there's any crookedness in this, you'll pay for it. Those were his exact words. Mr. Powell phoned and asked me to tell Miss Norton that he had to leave town immediately. I was expecting him for dinner. I was in a hurry to catch a plane. Mr. Carlton left the office to go to Mr. Powell's apartment. I never saw Carlton after I left the office. I answered the phone. Mr. Carlton said he wouldn't be home for dinner. He had to go to Mr. Powell's apartment on business. I saw Mr. Powell come out of his apartment with a suitcase and run down the hall. He looked excited. And when I unlocked Mr. Powell's apartment to go in and clean it up, I saw his body laying there on the floor. The furniture was upset and broken. There had been a fight. The body was lying face down, but I didn't find a gun. Death was due to a bullet in the right temple fired at close range. Examination of the body revealed numerous bruises, which could have been incurred in a struggle. It wouldn't be so bad if I were guilty, but I didn't kill Carlton. I didn't. I know that, Frank. It was Richards and Burns. They killed him for the insurance money. Can't anybody but me see that? It isn't what we think. We must prove it. The insurance company investigators and private detectives are working on that angle now. If I could get out of here for an hour, I'd prove it. I'd make them confess or I'd blow their heads off. Take it easy, boy. Thoughts like that won't do you any good. You must have faith. Faith that right will prevail. Faith in you. Faith. How much faith would you have if you were in my place? If they were taking you to prison? If you had to sit in a cell day after day, thinking of all the things you had to live for, and all the reasons why you didn't want to die, how much faith would... I only wish I could go in your place, Frank. I'm sorry. I guess it's my nerves. Nothing happens without a reason. Though sometimes it is hard to understand. Remember what I said that day in your office about making money the wrong way and retribution? Come now, put yourself together. Marjorie's waiting to see you. Keep that chin up. That's better. Frank. Hello, honey. Gee, you look pretty. New outfit? Of course not. Don't you remember it? Oh, sure, sure. Why, that's the outfit you wore the day we went to the fair. The day I asked you to be... No, no. This is the one I wore to the amusement park. The day our boat got stuck in the old mill tunnel and... How's the cooking coming along? Fine. I've got a new pie recipe. You make the crust with vanilla wafers. Come on, Paul. It's time to go with the train. You put whipped cream on it? It's nearly all whipped cream. I know I like it, but will you make one real soon? I'll make one for your birthday. And we'll put candles in the middle of it and light them. And it'll probably look so funny. We'll both sit there and laugh. <laughs> Come on, come on, step on it. The train's ready to pull out. Oh, let it go. This is one train I wouldn't mind missing. Yeah. Excuse me, pal. Hey. Give it back to him. I do with that handcuff key? Did I give it to you? Let's have it. 
Come on. I was just kidding. Yeah, you can't even be honest on your way to the pen. Get out there. All aboard! What are you going up for, buddy? He's going up for mud. Yes, but I'm innocent. So am I. They're railroading me, too. I never stole nothing in my life. Hey, how about getting a little air in here? Hey, get away from that window. This car here is air-conditioned. Yeah? You coppers in here, the air conditioner ain't good enough. You mug. Don't you try any of that stuff with me. I ought to smack you one right in the jaw. Oh, what are you getting peeved about? You don't have to pay for it. Tell them to put it on my bill. This guy. He was going up for a murder rap. We couldn't take Gabby without him. Yeah, how about getting off these bracelets? I'm tired of doing this sister act. Okay, Case. Sure spun me neat, boss. I gotta hand it to you. You're a right guy to work for. You ain't working for me no more, Gabby. You're all washed up. Oh. Huh? You heard me. I told you I'd spring you loose, and I did. And nobody's gonna work for me and work for himself, too. You like to pull jobs along? So hop to it. Oh, boss, you're, you're kidding. Am I? Here's a rod for you. Here's 20 bucks. Now get out of this town and forget that you've ever been here, if you know what's good for you. Here, buddy. Same thing goes for you. Thanks. I'll see that you get this back. Forget it. Well, so long, boss. So long, fellas. So long, Gabby. Whose draw is it? Your draw. Say, pal, here's just what we need to scram out of town. What do you say we borrow it? You go ahead. I'm not leaving. You ain't? Well, good luck. Hey, wait a minute. I'll give you $20 for that gun. Okay. Why, I... That's all right, pal. I already collected. Here's your gun. So long. So long. What can we do now? We mustn't give up hope. You mean you still believe he has a chance? Yes, more than ever. Here. Here's my engagement ring. We can raise some money on it. We're from headquarters. We want to look around. Go ahead, Mac. Well, what's the meaning of this? Don't you know? Well, if I did, I wouldn't have asked you. You've been here since 6 o'clock? Yes. And nothing unexpected happened? Why, what do you mean? Frank Powell escaped. Where's Richards? Why, uh, who is it, Burns? Come over here. All right, out with it. You two killed Carlton for the insurance money, didn't you? Tell me the truth, or I'll... Well, I, I guess you've got us, Powell. Yeah, we killed him. And framed me. I ought to put a bullet in the both of you. But that would be too quick. Get me the police station. I want you two to go through what I did. Looking forward to that electric chair. Hello, please. 
Send up a couple of men to 926 West 10th Street. Apartment 211. That's right. This is Frank Powell speaking. Powell. I've been waiting a long time for this. Frank. Curtis. I thought I'd find you here. They've confessed. I told you I'd make them. The police are on their way here now. They won't take them, Frank. They'll take you. But did you hear what I said? They've confessed. Confession at the point of a gun means nothing. You knew that. Well, this time you'll have something to send me to the chair for. Don't, Frank. G keep out of this, Curtis. Give me that gun. You don't know what you're doing. Keep out of this. Stay. They showed you this gun. The police can't hear. You can't turn him over to the police. Can't I? But you're sending an innocent man to the chair. The law says he's guilty. Isn't it possible for the law to be mistaken? That isn't for me to worry about. What the law says goes. Is that final? Yeah. Save your breath. Come on. I thought I was working things out. I've only made them worse. Well, you shouldn't have done it, Curtis. Did you think I was going to stand by and let them take you back? But now they'll take you to prison for helping me. You were set free for a reason, Frank. Perhaps to gain time. That's the way it's to be worked out. I'm not afraid. What you should do now is go away and hide until the truth comes out, which it will. Have you any money? No. Why, that's Marjorie's engagement ring. She gave it to me to raise money to help you. You know where we can get a loan on it tonight? I think I do. Drive the third and Tucker on the east side. What are you doing here? I came back to see if you could let me have some money on this. Who's the deacon? He's my brother, a missionary. You're in bad company, Mish. Come to my office. Ryan's just coming up the front stairs now. Ryan? Yes. He's a cop. Come with me. Get into that second door, the locker room. Meet Bill Scully. He's new in the district. How are you? Up after curfew, ain't you? Yeah. Gabby Holt got lifted off the train last night. And the chief is kind of put out because he got away with a pair of new bracelets. You wouldn't know where I would find them, do you? No, I wouldn't. I figured you wouldn't. Gabby Holt didn't have them on him when we picked them up a little while ago in a wrecked car he had stolen. So they must be on the other fellow that was pinned to him on the train. A guy named Powell. He was on his way to the chair. You mean the guys that were handcuffed together got away? Yeah. <laughs> what was the matter with the guards? Did they fall asleep? Yeah. They were up late the night before playing cards. Oh. <laughs> Say, do you mind if I show Bill around? He's never been in an athletic club before. Sure. Help yourself. Excuse me. Did you find anything? Yeah, a hairpin. <laughs> the 
You're new around here, aren't you? Yeah. Where are you from? New York. We gotta get Mish away from Ryan. Put him in the ring with Roundhouse. Well, he ain't no fighter. What's the difference? If he gets knocked cold, he can't answer Ryan's questions. Okay. Hey, Mish, get in the ring. Take it easy, Roundhouse. You've had a pretty good workout already. Hey, your shoelace is undone. Look. <laughs> you know what I tell those pork and beaters? They'll fall for that gag any time. All right, take <laughs> them out. <laughs> all right, give me all you got. But look out for your buttons. Come on, let's see some. Oh, what is guy, huh? Look out for my right hand. Oh, is that slow? I've seen that guy somewhere before. Yeah? Maybe you've seen him fight in New York. Maybe so. But I've never been in New York. Pretty good, huh? He's too good for you, Roundhouse. Oh, hey, your shoelace is undone. No, it isn't, but yours is. Where'd you learn to fight like that? College. <laughs> hey, you'd better send Roundhouse to college. Hello, Tony. This is Sparks. Yeah? Same to you and many of them. Listen, Roundhouse can't fight on the 15th. He broke his jaw. What'd he do, fall out of bed? No. He tripped over his shoelace. Listen, I'm telling you this because I'm calling off that four grand bet. What do you mean you're calling it off? You can't crawfish on no bet with me. If Roundhouse can't fight, put one of your other boys in. That bet still goes. He won't do it. You gotta take Roundhouse place on the 15th, Mish. That's absurd. But you, you said you were the inter-college champ. Yes, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, but you didn't do the bad out there. And Tony's boy ain't no champ. You're crazy, Sparks. He hasn't got a chance. Well, who have we got to do it? Now listen, you got me into this and you're gonna get me out. I'm holding him. And if you don't win the fight on the 15th, I turn him back to the police. And if I do win it, I'll give you 500 bucks and give you back your own ring. What's the matter? I got a Charlie horse. Maybe we better turn back. No, no, you, you go ahead. I'll wait for you here. All right, take it easy. All right. Don't mention it, Miss Vincent. But remember, he's in training. Good morning. Good morning. Nice day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Much nicer than yesterday morning. Is it? But not as nice as the day before. Isn't it? Now that we've settled the weather question, why didn't you come to my party last night? Sorry, that's against training regulations. Don't you ever do anything you shouldn't? I try not to. I'm not used to having my invitations ignored. I meant no offense, Miss Vincent. My friends call me Helen. I'm afraid seeing you six mornings on the bridal path hardly gives me that privilege. Oh, so that's it. Well, see you again sometime. Goodbye. Okay, fella. Come on. Something wrong, lady? Go 
away, will you? Beat it. Are you having a fit? No, I'm not having a fit. I'm unconscious. Can't you see? Now beat it, will you? Go away, beat it. Are you sure you ain't crazy? Are you hurt? Helen! Did you see what happened? Well, yes, yeah, she was... <sighs> Helen, can you hear me? Helen! Well, mister, they no need to get head up. Oh. Just a... Help! Help! Where can I get some water? Well, you might throw her in the creek right over there. I thought Matilda was touched in the head. What are you doing back here? I came back to get warm. That mish is colder than a cake of ice. You mean he wouldn't give you a tumble? That's just what I mean. The guy ain't human. I'd rather make love to the Sphinx. Who's he? He's an Egyptian. Oh, an Egyptian, huh? Where'd you meet him? He's a statue. You should have stayed up there and kept trying. Say, when a guy carries me four miles in his arms and don't even crack a smile, I'm through. I guess you're slipping. I gotta spoil this fight some way. That mish is dynamite. I watched him work. Why don't you call off the bet? Sparks wanted to. That's an idea. Smokey, I'm going to buy you a new knife. Sparks, I've been thinking things over. You and I ought to quit trying to get the best of each other and be friends. Yeah. Just to prove what I mean, I'm going to see things your way and call off that fight bet. You mean you don't want to take advantage of me, huh? Well, that's real nice of you. Oh, not at all, pal. Don't pal me, you big mug. I know what's up your sleeve. You're afraid Mish will clean up the ring with your boy. And that's just what he's going to do. So I ain't calling off no bets. <laughs> Am I laughing? You don't get no new knife. Maybe you let me take care of him. Say, Tony. Who do you think this Mish guy is? Come on, spill it. I don't feel like guessing. He's a brother of the guy we framed. The what? Yeah, you know Frank Powell's brother, the preacher. You know the, the guy the cops are looking for for helping the kid escape. A preacher? Then I ain't slipping. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> oh, am I laughing. Max, have a cigar. Oh, thanks. Smokey, go ahead and jab your knife in my desk. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Hiya, kid. How you feeling? I'm all right. How's Mish? Mish? <laughs> he couldn't be better. Say, and what a fighter he is. If he'd only quit preaching and let me manage him, we'd go places. He'd never do that. I know it. I've been talking to him quite a lot lately. He sure gets a kick out of saving souls. You know, the way he puts it, it sort of makes me want to get in that racket myself. That's Keyes. Let him come in. He's bringing someone up to see you. Mitch told me to do it. Marjorie. Frank. Hello? This is Sam. The cops grabbed Mish. They've got him in jail. How did they get wise? I don't know, but that flatfoot Ryan's around here looking for you. Let him look. I'm getting the mouthpiece on it right away. He's right here now. Here, he wants to talk to you. Hello. Oh, no chance, Sparks. Oh, they're holding him without bail. You mean you can't spring him? What's the matter? Mish is in jail. Hey, listen, they can't do that. He's got to fight next Tuesday, telling me. Oh, I knew he couldn't get away with it. You knew it, and it's all your fault. Because Mish says if you believe in a thing strong enough, it'll come true. Maybe we can trade the kid for him. Yeah, and maybe we won't. 
Besides, that'll be letting Mish down. Now get away from me. I gotta think. What if we shut up? Mish says you're innocent, so you are innocent. But it's up to us guys to prove it. So they won't have nothing to hold them for. But I don't think There that... you go, thinking wrong again. But the police haven't been able to prove anything. The police. Who does the things for them to figure out? It's guys like us. Well then, guys like us who are experts can figure out the things we do better than they can. Come on! This is my apartment. Keys. What kind of a lock is it? Plenty tough. This guy that was killed, did he have a key? No. There were only two. I had one and the manager the other. Believe me, the guy that opened this door was an expert. Turn on the lights. He couldn't get in that window. Is that the only door? Yes. Where was the body? Well, as I understood it, this table was overturned, and the body was found lying face down behind it. Satchel, take a look. The rest of you boys give the apartment a once over, and don't miss nothing. You say nobody heard that? That's right. Well, maybe they couldn't with the door closed. Let's see. Did you hear the shot? Yes. That proof. The guy was killed somewhere else and was brought here. You see? You can't go wrong if you do what Mish tells you. What was the last place you saw caught in the line? In his office in the mutual building. Step town. Good way to get in. Nobody can see you. Where's the office? Right over there. Keys. Did anyone see Carlton go out after you left? His two partners, Richards and Burns. Well, they're in on the frame up. That don't mean nothing. Anybody else? An elevator boy thought he saw them, but he wasn't sure. So many people leave about that time. Stick outside. Hit the lights. Dusty. Looks like this place ain't being used. It isn't. The offices are closed while the state audits the books. Where were the partners when this guy was killed? Well, they left directly from here and went to their club and remained there all night. An alibi, huh? And they must have had somebody else pull the job for them. Stick him up. Frank Powell. What are you doing up here? Trying to prove I didn't kill Carlton. Who are these fellas? We're uh, criminal experts working on the case. OK, you can put your hands down now. Well, ain't you the police? No, we're investigators from the insurance company. We're still working on the idea that maybe you were framed. Have you found anything yet? Not yet. Have you? No. Come on, fellas, we got work to do. I can't work with detectives watching. It makes me nervous. OK. Come on, Fred. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see the partner's office. Well, that's Richard's office over there. Burns is on the other side. Let's go. Say, what's this thing? A phonograph? No, oh, it's a dictaphone. A dictaphone? What's that for? Well, instead of giving a letter to your stenographer, you put it on a, on a record. 
Say, that's all right, ain't it? I wouldn't have one, though. Why not? Ain't no fun holding that thing on your lap. Is this what you used? Yeah. Okay. Hey, leave that alone. I was just looking at it. Well, look for evidence. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay, boss. Hey, Keith, look at this. Hello, Smokey. Where's Tony? All on business. That's a bad habit you got there. Yeah? What makes you think so? It ain't so hard to tell where you've been. What do you guys want? We want you. What do you know about a guy named Carlton who was killed? I don't know nothing. So you won't talk? Hey, that ain't the way. Let's do this thing right. Lock the door and turn down the lights. Sit down. What's the idea? The idea is for you to try and keep from talking and for us to try and make you talk. Are you ready? Where were you the night Carlton was killed? Hey, that ain't the right way. Give him a chance to answer. I, I ain't talking. You were up in his office, weren't you? No, I wasn't. You're lying. Oh, wait a minute. It's my turn. Go ahead. Ah, I forgot what I was going to ask you. You know a couple of guys named Richard and Burns? That light hurts my eyes. It's supposed to. Come on, now answer. I never heard of him. How much dough did you get for that job? Listen, you guys are all wet. Hey, this is funny. I've been on the wrong side of the light all the time. You might as well tell the truth. Now, come clean. What are you going to do with that hose? Well, I ain't going to water no lawn with it. Good morning, Mr. Burns. Morning. Morning. Sure seems good to be back on the job again. Yes, it does. There's a sign painter coming pretty soon. I want him to take Carlton's name off that door and put mine on. Yes, sir. And tell him to take off Powell's name, too. Yes, sir. Well, Sam, you getting everything cleaned up? Yes, sir. I sure is glad to see you all open up again. Because me and the other boys is kind of getting scared about our oil stock. Now, you just hang on to that stock and you'll be a rich man one of these days. Yes, sir. That's just what we're going to do. Oh, uh, Sam, uh, I want you to take this desk out of here and move in the one from my old office. Yes, sir. I'll get another man and fix that for you right away, sir. I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to work at that desk either. It's a partly used cylinder here. Hmm. Probably a letter that Carlton's secretary overlooked. To my dear family, I was persuaded by my two partners What's the matter? This is the suicide letter dictated by Carlton. To join them in using some of the company's funds for personal speculation. I cannot bear the thought of facing those with whom I have broken faith, nor the disgrace I have brought on you, whom I love. That is why I am taking my own life. With my last breath, I ask your forgiveness, William Carlton. Are we lucky? The police have found this. They had to convict us of fraud. Yes, and prove that Powell was innocent. No, no. This will never prove anything. Yes? You two men are under arrest. Arrest? What for? For the murder of William Carlton. Why, that's ridiculous. Is it? We got a signed confession from Tony Murak and two of his men who framed Powell for you. Why, we didn't murder him. He committed suicide. Well, that's the truth. Well, if you can prove it, you can save yourselves from the chair. Thank you. 
Don't stay away so long this time. I won't. And don't forget to write and take good care of yourself. Hi, Mitch! Hello, Spark. I never expected to see you down here. And I never expected to be here. But you were right again, pal. About what? About being honest. Me and the boys come clean with the judge about taking Gabby from the train and everything. And what do you think he did? What? He gave us three years. Three, three years? years? Yeah. <laughs> Suspended sentence. <laughs> so it's a straight and narrow from me from now on. You know, the good old right road. <laughs> hey, Tyler! I got a little present for you. Well, it was a swell idea anyhow. Hey, fish! If the police ever let Tony Barack out of jail, don't forget you'll be a fight!